Hello everybody, this is Tajik Bay, 8.15 p.m. British time. This is um, February 15th. We're only two days away from UFC 298. We're in the main event. Alex, the GOAT, Volkanovski uh, meets uh, Ilya uh, Topuria. Um, very, very interesting main uh, main event, very exciting. I'm going to talk about uh, this, definitely about this, this fight, break it down. I already posted a few tweets. And you probably know my pick uh, by now. If you don't, go to my um, Twitter uh, handle at Tajik Bay and then find out for yourself. But if you're here for to kind of maybe listen to the breakdown um, and prefer to get it, you know, get my pick by uh, by a podcast, um, yeah, might as well just you know lay lay down and you know chill out, lay and, and enjoy um the 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 show so yeah but i'm we're gonna go um bottom uh up right like so from the bottom of the card first fight is andrea lee versus miranda maverick um i placed uh andrea lee as a um as an underdog of the week if i'm not mistaken how do i like why am i not, i don't even remember how did i place her uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure she's uh, she's my underdog of the week yeah and um it was plus 160, which was I, I thought was interesting. Uh, the reason why I picked uh, picked uh, Andrea Lee in first place is um, I, I just feel like can uh, uh, can Miranda take her down? I think he can. She can take her down, but Miranda never kind of like boasted this this heavy, you know, crazy control. Um, she's great, I think, at um, um, just pure jujitsu competition, you know, outside of MMA. But I think inside the cage, it's um, it's a little bit different story, right? Like I think you you have to you, you're gonna struggle, right? Like this is not your uh, BJJ. Like you're gonna get uh, you're gonna get punched, you're gonna get kicked. So you have to kind of manage your grappling wisely. Um, what has me going for Andrea is like obviously her striking is really good. Uh, her takedown defense is actually solid. If I'm not mistaken, uh, her takedown defense is actually better than. Uh, than Miranda Maverick's uh, takedown defense. And I think that's one of the things we're not paying attention to. We somehow think that uh, Miranda is going to go out there and uh, just, um, you know, chain wrestle and control because I, I don't know if you believe that she will outstrike. And really, I don't think that's going to be the case. But uh, he, here's the deal, right? Uh, and really is bigger. You know, she's taller. Uh, she has a reach advantage. The age disparity is not on her side, which is a significant difference. Um, none of that can ma- uh, may matter just uh, because we know that, you know, from the age perspective, fighters younger, you know, by uh, seven years, by six years even and up, um, have a uh, win at a very high clip. So Miranda can go out there and, uh, yeah, just on that uh, stat alone, dominate, uh, yeah, win, win the fight. So there's a good chance that she... That you could, um, but uh, aside of that, everything else on the paper screams Andrea Lee. Uh, taller, uh, again, like I said, reach. Uh, she she throws more. Uh, her striking defense is better, although she because she uh, she's thrown a lot of punches against. You know, her um, uh, pure like absorption rate, strike absorption rates per minute is 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 higher. Uh, one full strike per minute higher, but her striking defense uh, is superior. Um, based on the uh, the output that is being thrown uh, for both fighters, so if we compare that, um, in terms of strike, in terms of grappling, uh, takedown accuracy, Lee has, like I said, higher accuracy. She has a better actually takedown defense. So I don't know what Miranda Maverick has. I think Miranda, if she wants to win, she has to add a lot. Um, um, she has to make improvements, which I think she can make. You know, we know every fighter and is kind of, especially in her age, you know, can make improvements fights to fights to fights. And mean, we may not uh, know she's 26 years of age, right? Um, I just, I just don't, uh, you know, when I look at Andrea Lee, she, and, and Andrea Lee is, is Andrea Lee. I don't think we're going to see a different, improved, is that version. I think she fights very well already, to be honest with you. Uh, you... I mean, if you look into a record, it doesn't <laughs> doesn't speak maybe uh, um, in a positive light of Andrea because Andrea lost like he, she's two and six in her last eight fights, which I think is uh, pretty uh, pretty abysmal. Um, but yeah, Barbara, I thought she won. 
um, Araujo put a little bit more re uh, wrestling. And yeah, and those Lauren Murphy, Joanna Wood fights. I mean, she could have easily been four and four here, uh, boys. Like I don't know, in my opinion. But just so happens, right? Like there's a reason she somehow in the, in the face of the judges, she doesn't look good. Um, there's something about the style, something about the output. There's something about the way she fights that uh, makes her lose those close decisions. And you never know with Miranda's control, Maverick's control, uh, this could happen as well. But that's why kind of the Lee is perhaps an underdog here. And that's maybe a calculation here that uh, Miranda is going to overpower and uh, uh, control Andre Lee. But I don't think that, that this is going to happen. I think uh, if Andrea scrambles well, which I think she always does, uh, then she could uh, just pick Miranda Maverick apart. So, yeah, like I'm not going to, you know, talk about this fight uh, much longer. And, um, yeah, I, I have Andrea Lee. She's an underdog. I think she's a good underdog. So I think she has a very good chance of winning this fight, despite Miranda be, being a favorite. Uh, Val Woodburn uh, Burn versus Oban uh, Elliott. Um, this is tough. Uh, like, I'm going to say something maybe less popular, but, and it may not age well, but I'm not a believer in that Oban Elliott story, to be honest with you. And people say that he does well, everything, you know, well, he improved this, that. Um, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I just don't see it. Uh, is he, what, what are the odds? Let's check the odds. Because um, Val is dropping Val. Val hits hard, you know, it's hard to finish uh, Val. But he's, he's, de he's decent. Uh, Val right now, minus 259. Um... Yeah, this is going to be weird, guys. This is going to be weird. Um, I'm not, uh, I haven't tweeted about it yet, but it kind of looks like this to me is going to be an upset and then Val is just simply going to catch him something. Just has, just watching Oban, he's just so not convincing. And then we see those losses in the past, right? Like uh, he's been stopped. Uh, Mother's Fleminus and then uh, Michal uh, Filiak. I mean, yes. Yeah, Kaik Brito, but wasn't Kaik Brito fight also close? Like, just from my memory, like, uh, yeah, could have gone either way. I don't know, boys. I don't know. I, he, here's the thing. Let me let me take a step back, right? Like, I'm not going to go, like, apples to apples, this, that. Like, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, here's what I'm going to say. Oban, um, in terms of experience, both fighters are brand new, right? Like, to, to the, I'm not going to say to the MMA scene, like, Bo uh, bo both have decent experience, but like Val, Val uh, Woodburn, professional 7-1. and one. Oban is uh, a little bit more experienced, 9-2. Uh, and two. But Val obviously has UFC experience already, right? So he's not going to have octagon jitters. But at this level, when these fights... Um, when, when, when the fighters... There's just so much uh, ambiguity when two fighters come in not at the highest level of competition. And that's what you have to remember, boys. Like, when you go, like, this convincingly about on the Oban, you have to understand that just, like, you know, like, a couple of fights ago, like, he fought, like, a two-and-one guy, right? Like, whereas the last fight, like, Val fought was against, like, Bo Nickel and stuff like that. I, I mean to say this is that when the fighters are inexperienced, they're making um, their UFC debut, this, that, and... Um, there's just a lot of volatility. And uh, well, what I tend to do is that I tend to embrace that volatility. And I need to be, I don't need to be right most of the times. If I think that Valve Woodburn wins, like let's say maybe, you know, three times out of 10 they fight, you know, and I'm going to bet on this outcome, like I'm I'm still going to be profitable. That's what I think is, is important, what, what people may, may not understand, you know. You know, you if you bet Val at, at these odds, right? Like this is plus two fifty nine right now. It, it you you don't need to win every single time, right? At plus two fifty nine, I think Val is a good value. Do I think he wins? I actually have a great, not great, but fair deal of confidence that he does. And but yeah, I mean, Oban is making great improvements, and obviously. Um, training in the shore academy can help him. There's that, like, but it's just guys. Like in the end of the day. In the end of the day, let me let me sum, sum it up. The two fighters, uh, in the beginning of their career, I want to say not not maybe yeah, 
not entirely in the beginning, beginning, right? Like, but professionally, like starting to get to the higher level of competition, but like a very, a very new at the highest level of competition, which is UFC, right? One is making their debut, another had like a, like a minute of fighting in the UFC. In terms of pure skill set, there's nothing on the paper that suggests that Oban is just like way like levels above Val. Uh, Val. Val hits hard, you know, Oban has his ways. Like, so w what warrants plus 309, you know, plus 326? It just doesn't make sense, guys. It just doesn't make sense. Um, so, yeah. It's the second underdog I'm going with. I'm feeling weird because uh, I I have Josh Kinlan over Danny Barlow, and uh, because Barlow would that, I'll keep it short. Barlow would have to stop uh, Quinlan, and Quinlan has a you know has a pretty good chin. And so if Barlow doesn't finish, then he's going to get tired and exhausted. And Quinlan, you know, despite the fact that he's not the most efficient fighter, is just going to take over. That's it, Josh Quinlan. Plus 182. Third underdog in a row. Let's see if we can go with the fourth underdog in a row. <laughs> and I think just the way it looks, on, at least on some of the lines, we're going to go with the fourth underdog in a row, which is Brenton Ribeira. Oof. Guys, this is like a, a little bit like a fraud check on both sides. But, I mean, Askar Mojarov st stopped Ming Yang Zhang. And I know how Ming Yang uh, looked in his last fight against Tokas, I think, which looked like, wow, look. But, like, guys, like, this is not, I don't know. I think both fighters are very vulnerable. And I, I, I don't make much of the last win even for, from, um, what's this guy's name? From Brent, uh, Brent Ribeiro. Um, honestly, like, this Bruno, Bruno Lopez fight, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But, um, I mean, Barhudarian is actually, like, he's, he's pretty decent. Although the promotion, like, AMC is not really good. Um... I don't know, boys. I mean, both are like it. It can. It's a it's, fifty-fifty it's fight. I'll. I'll, I'll leave, let, let. Let me. Let me make my pick, and explain uh, how things are. By, fights like this, I don't bet normally, but it's like this. It's a fifty-fifty fight. Maybe slightly. I think maybe Branson should be favored if I have to choose. Branson is my pick, and like from a betting perspective, plus number on either side is okay. You get plus money, like plus one hundred on Branson. You're fine. If the line flips, yeah, when you're betting Zhang, okay, I, I, I don't, I don't hate that. Although I have, I, I have a bias towards Ming Zhang because I don't think just his last performance probably makes him look better than he is. But both fighters are uh, vulnerable. Both fighters can get KO. I'm just gonna trust a little bit with more, uh, with a fighter that has a little bit more. And I don't like using this word, but probably a little bit more legitimacy, yeah, uh, if, if I may. So yeah, and I may. Um, yeah, so let's keep going. Rinya Nakamura, Carlos Vela, Rinya, uh, probably Rinya ITD. If you took it, you should do just fine. You should probably stop Carlos Vela. Um, uh, Marcos Rogero de Lima versus Justin Taffa. This is a little bit tough, uh, <laughs> tough, tough, because uh, I thought um, I actually thought that uh, Marcos is going to be a much bigger guy than Taffa, but it doesn't look like he's like way bigger. I mean. But we'll see it the way ends, right? This topology telling me this. Um, I don't have, like, a good take, to be honest with you. Uh, Marcos, like, in terms of the process, like, he's a good bet. Like, he's not a terrible. You know, he does he does things. Like, he's going to strike with you. But um, it just doesn't help when you've been compromised by Derek Lewis. This bet. I just don't know the extent of his injury, how well he recovered this, that. There's just so much volatility there. All of his tooth fell off. He's 30, uh, eight years of age. Uh, we again, we said like eight years of difference. Uh, Tafa is a younger fighter, and it's just yeah, younger fighter win at a high, higher clip. You do have um, you do have um, uh, Rogero de Lima as a favorite, and this line has been climbing, and and now uh, you know Tafa is like plus one twenty three. The best price is plus one twenty eight. So I think this line movement is fair, and Tafa. <sighs> It's going to be a close fight. It can go either way. If I have to make a pick, probably, like, process-wise, like, ooh, I just said process-wise that Marcos is, is, is the side, but I, I meant it in just in, in from the technicality stand. He does things right. And if needed, he may be, he may even, you know, go to the ground. He just ways to win type stuff. But, again, I just don't know what's going on in, 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 in his world, how he... I don't normally factor in this... Um, 
type of like injuries, this, that, but he, he spoke about how profoundly injured he was after the fight with uh, Derek Lewis. And um, yeah, I'm just taking his word, got to take his word on his face value. So yeah, but um, but again, on the paper, like I said, more he has probably more ways to win um, this fight just because the, the, the uh, takedown upside is there. But based on the a, 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 um, age, I was going to say edge, age and, um, and you know, Tafa being, making improvements fight to fight, I think it's just easier to see why this line continues to drop towards, um, yeah, Justin Tafa. Um, I, I, I get it. Pick, ooh, I don't know, guys. I don't know. Yeah, let's just go with um I yeah, I think it's probably it's, yeah, I'll go with Justin Tuffa. Go with Justin Tuffa, although the confidence level is not high. Yeah, so let's let's keep going. Uh thank you guys for tuning in. Um appreciate your support. If you um this is gonna be on all the podcasts, uh, screaming, uh, streaming and broadcasting, podcasting and, and very many other platforms. Yeah, so um yeah, thanks for tuning in, Tajik Bay that's upstack.com tajikbay.com uh at tajikbay on uh, twitter yeah and um yeah spotify google uh podcast everywhere so yeah good stuff um thanks for tuning in uh Lemos versus dern dern it sounds like she's training with part-time manager part-time for, uh coach uh the situation is weird um a lot of distractions and because of the you know personal trials and tribulations in Mackenzie, but Mackenzie, you know all that all that said, she can just jump and all she needs is just one opportunity and then she could get her uh, sub. Um, yeah. How many times we said that and how many times that actually happened, boys? Like seriously, like we said that that the last time it happened was since twenty twenty one against Nina Nunez and Nina Nunez was just making a comeback after pregnancy, this that, and then I think retired after this fight. Right? Yeah. I'm going to go with Amanda Lemos here. So let's keep going. Um, this is interesting because Anthony Hernandez versus Roman Kopolov. I picked Roman Kopolov. Um, and there are a couple of stats that I brought. So you can you can uh, look them up on Twitter as well. Actually getting like... I think you guys are liking this. Um, this, uh, <laughs> this, this tweets like which I feel like... Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think Kopolov is fine. If, here's the thing. A lot of people think that Hernandez is going to be efficient in the uh, grappling, uh, and I think it's a fair point. My question to you guys, counter to you, would be like, what if he doesn't, right? Because Kopolov has 92% takedown defense against not the be better wrestlers and grapplers, right? And uh, Fluffy is just really tenacious. You can just drag drag um, a couple of feet for three rounds and just make a little damage and win just on that. But what if he doesn't? What if he's unable to take him down and, you know, just clinch him this, that, tear him out? And it's just what, like, is it a 50-50 fight? I, I don't even think so because I think that couple of them is the, has an edge. So, yeah, I'm going to pick the couple of here. Um, great striking output. Uh, striking defense is great as well. And then, like I said, 92% takedown defense. Fl Fluffy would have to work hard if he wants to win it. And that's why, to me, what matters is not who I think wins because probably Hernandez has this, like, a lot of hype and a lot of momentum. But they both do, really. It's just about the number, guys. I'm not picking, like, the who wins. I'm picking who do I think is a good value at the odds given. And I think at plus 220, Roman is a great uh, is a great value. Mirad Valish really line is going crazy right now. <laughs> it's just so, oh boy. How many times we've seen it? Yeah, something is off with Henry. Henry, it looks like uh, his main coach of Henry Cejudo is Henry Cejudo. Um, because I just watched podcast with um, Santino DeFranco. And Santino said that essentially everybody, even Albaracin, everybody is, is off. And he's just one boxing coach and then whatever. Yeah, like, yeah, it's just that maybe he just wants to save on the camp and just leave honorably or something like that. Doesn't want to pay coaches, which is like, an, which is pretty, if it's true, I don't know, it's just an opinion or, or um, just just a guess, right? Then it's a, it's a dirt bag move and I, that never was high on Henry anyway. So that's probably what's happening here. Just doesn't want to pay his coaches. Um, yeah. Mm. But yeah, essentially Mirab is just uh, Mirab is like this, right? Like I'm gonna say this, it's maybe a little bit controversial, but I think Mirab has a better wrestling, right? 
not pure wrestling, right? Because it was an if it was an Olympic competition or like just pure wrestling, uh, it's like at a competitive level, right? In terms of like pins, points, uh, this that, like Henry would have probably won, but we were not that. I'm talking about the wrestling for MMA, folk style wrestling, and the way Mirab has adapt- adapted. Mirab is essentially like Khabib 2.0. Wild strikes, just infinite cardio, and just ten- tenacity in the takedowns, just infinite amount. So that's that. That's why he's just the big favorite. And, uh, and yeah, like Henry is just, I don't know, just... And I, and I, so I don't have anything nice things to say about Henry, so I'm not going to say much. Gary versus Neil, I don't know. Same thing about Gary. Gary... I wish he didn't talk uh, trash and uh, said things that he said um, previously, and but now it's kind of a little bit too late. So yeah, I don't think it's gonna get to him, and uh, he he's striking is really good. He just I just hope that he's not gonna feel overconfident because if Jeff Neal pressures him, so I think he can cause some troubles. Definitely not being yeah, betting Ian Gary. I think he wins, but yeah, like I don't I don't care about Ian Gary. He's, he's irrelevant to me. Ooh. Now this one is uh, tricky, boys, because Robert Whitaker, aka Bobby Knuckles, is great everywhere. He's great, great striking, great this, great that. He can take you down, cause your troubles everywhere. And Paulo Costa is is an influencer at this point. But, but, 250, 275, minus 275, Robert Whitaker doesn't make sense, boys. If you're betting Paulo Costa at plus 210 or anything over at plus 200, I'm going to shake your hand. I'm, I'm going to say it's a good bet because uh, Paulo pa- 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 is, 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 is bigger, right? And um, in terms of striking, I think he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a decent striker. Yeah, it didn't look good. Like I, I think Paulo is getting too much uh, criticism. Uh, I think I unjustified uh, because of his fight with Luke, uh, Rockhold. <laughs> I almost called him Luke Rockhold. <laughs> uh, yeah, but um, but Luke was training. He was serious about this fight. He was. It's, I understand. Like he, not, he didn't lose a win a fight in like ten years or whatnot, but. Ooh, guys, yeah, Luke is a good striker. Is what I'm trying to say. Luke, like, is is a is a former champion. So, I d- I don't know if I share this uh, criticism towards um, Paul Paulo. And honestly, like, he may not even show up, but um, and he can look terrible. But let me let me put say this with an asterisk and with accurately. If if Paulo Costa trained for this fight and come comes into this fight. In an optimal shape, ready and motivated, which is a big, big if. But if he does, then he has a good chance of winning this fight. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and pick him to win this fight. Um, pam, pam. Andre, uh, Alexander uh, Volkanovsky versus Ilya Tupuri. Ilya is putting so much pressure on himself. He's either going to be really like, uh, I understand what he's trying to do. He's up, uh, upping the stakes. Like, he's either going to be next corner or he's going to be the biggest laughing stock. But Man, changing your record like this, like on your Instagram page, and just taking the belt, just talking that the the worst thing that you can say and mentally prepare, like say and and sound mentally weak is to say that this is an easiest fight that he's gonna run through him and stuff like that. This is the the one of the is this is very strong, like this is like uh, McGregor esque strong, like versus Jose Aldo, but. More often than not, right? Like more often than not, not not more often than not, like in ninety nine percent of the cases, when you have this level of confidence against this this high caliber of opponent, you 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 are gonna lose. There's very few times, and in fact, like, there's probably this one time that we saw when Aldo was put away by by, by Connor. This was once in just uh, in a lifetime situation where 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 it, where it happened. We just saw it one. I think it's just once. With, I'm not talking about like upsets, right? Like Sarah versus GSP with that. I'm talking about the guy saying, hey, I'm going to go out there and run through him. And everybody was like, Aldo is just going to destroy him. Maybe a little bit close like this was um, O'Malley versus Jan, but uh, prime. this was prime Aldo. 
and nobody knew much against uh, uh, nobody like not gonna say nobody knew much but but Connor was just rising and uh maybe O'Malley was the same but O'Malley doesn't do trash talking much right like but Connor said I'm gonna just gonna go and just run through him right and this is Ilya is doing if Ilya wins this fight he's like super special like he's just that this is road to superstardom but I think it's a little bit problematic to put your career on the line like this just on this on one fight because uh, Alex is so agile do you know he's much diverse striker he I think he hits hard. like I'm not gonna say he hits like he has he has a great power and his power doesn't go away uh with with the rounds infinite cardio i think honestly like in terms of offensive wrestling i think alex can has a chance actually to take down Tapuria and to dominate him on the ground although i think in terms of poor, poor grappling uh Ilya Tapuria is a better B- bjj artist but oh boy yeah alex here alex makes sense and uh that would be my pick uh, guys, so how long has this been? Uh, this recording has been 26 minutes. I'm going to end the show right now. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in, and good luck on Saturday. Take care.